Hey folks and welcome back to the Mac Greer Music Channel. So today what I wanted to do is a deeper dive into the bass part of the bass and beats or in other words I want to do a deeper dive into the wavetable synth engine that is on this device. Now I've already done a whole review of it kind of focused on that video just kind of giving you my thoughts of the workflow and what it provides in terms of features but I really want to go deeper in depth on the synth because for me that was the main selling point of this unit anyway. Um, I have plenty of drum machines, I really didn't need another drum machine, but I really like Wavetable synths because I make a lot of jungle drum and bass and I think Wavetable synths are absolutely brilliant for that kind of thing. Um, and so far this has not disappointed in that regard either. So um, yeah, let's get right into it. I'm going to jump into the synth edit mode here. I'm going to find a bank, I'm going to do bank 8 and it's asking me where I want to put something. I'm going to say just the first slot. I haven't used that one yet, so I'm going to hit OK. Bam, it just said edit. Now I'm in edit mode, which means I need this guy right here. This is the overlay that uh, gets us into memory edit. I'm not sure why it's called memory. Um, I feel like it could have called it synth edit or bass edit because it is the bass and beats after all. But uh, same thing, we're, we're in the synth mode here where we can edit the sounds. Um, no real plan here, I'm just going to jump in and kind of just start making sounds with it. So we've got a basic waveform right there for oscillator 1. I'm just going to kind of go to whatever sounds interesting to my ears there. So, Okay, cool. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn on oscillator 2. I'm going to choose something that's quite different than oscillator 1 so that we can quite easily tell what each is doing. You can choose the same waveform for both if you want to. But there we go. I've got uh, oscillator 1 and oscillator 2 turned on. I've got the uh, waveform for those selected. Now I'm going to mess with the pitch a little bit. I'm on oscillator. When it's red like that means I'm editing parameters for oscillator 1. If oscillator 2 was red we'd be editing that one. But I'm going to go back to oscillator 1 now. I'm going to choose the pitch here. And I'm just going to set it just a little bit off, so... You can go way further down, you can go down a whole octave or two if you want, but uh, I just wanted a little bit off. I'm going to do the same for oscillator 2, so for I'm going to go the other way. just to give it a little bit of drift, kind of make that sound a little more interesting. Um, okay, so let's pitch, go back to oscillator one here. I'm gonna adjust the phase. It doesn't really come into play yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn the phase all the way up for both of these. Uh, I'm gonna adjust the position. Now this is where you get into the uh, more um, scientific realms of a wavetable synthesizer. Um, <clears throat> If you can think about a wavetable as well, like a table, uh, you've got this kind of area of three-dimensional space. And if you think of it maybe as a series of mountains with peaks and valleys over a cross of like a space, your position, you're choosing where from front to back you want to take the wave out of that full table of offerings. So up here might be a really tall mountain, back here might be more mellow or vice versa, and I'm going to kind of choose between those. So um, <clears throat> it's kind of three-dimensionally kind of represents how a wavetable works, but uh, I'm going to go Can hear the sound changes that's because I'm choosing different location in that wavetable. I'm going to go to oscillator one do the same thing. Okay um, so again you might that's one of the things that's a little harder to predict what it will sound like before you're engaging with it so it's more of a trial and error and again all these different waves will have their own wavetable with varying degrees of intensity depending where you are in the position. Uh, this is level. I'm going to leave that alone for now. This is output. I can determine if I want the oscillator before the filter, after the filter, etc. Uh, I'm going to go into page two now. So this is illuminated, which means I'm in page two. So that's like 
this pink line down here with the white text. So instead of pitch, I'm actually adjusting the um, oscillator sync type. That sounds interesting. All right, you've got voices here as well. Um, you can determine how many voices each oscillator has, uh, up to six. I'm gonna use six because uh, I want it fat. And then you can detune those voices. And then here you can blend that. So just between the two oscillators so far, we've created a pretty interesting sound. Um, <clears throat> now I turned up the dimension on both. Now you remember when we messed with phase? Um, this synthesizer lets you kind of spread apart the two oscillators in the stereo spectrum so that put these to zero it's a true mono voice it's right down the middle but if you widen them out it becomes quite a bit more interesting it's almost like a chorus effect in that regard so uh, let's go ahead and turn on our sub oscillator Whoa, that got huge all right uh, I'm gonna adjust the pitch of that Now the sub oscillator on this synth is almost like a third oscillator because you can change the octaves to up or down. It also has a number of different wave types. So this button right here says sub type. You can choose different. Pretty cool. Um, and again, a number of these other parameters can be adjusted as well. If you get dotted lines like that, that means that parameter doesn't work on the thing that you're trying to edit. But you can see quite a few of these still work. Turn it down just a little bit. All right, now we've got noise. Yes, let's turn on noise. I'm going to turn off the oscillators so you can hear it. That's a little bit loud. Turn it down there. Uh, and you've got, in page two, you've got noise types. So we've got white noise, pink, brown, the normal stuff. And then you have all these like sampled noises. Like that's traffic, I think. Yeah, some kind of city noise. That's just kind of an ambient texture. ATN, I guess that's ambient texture noise. Bunch of different types. You got vinyl. Water. I mean, how cool is that? That seems interesting. All right, so now let's put uh, our oscillators back on. That noise is blended in. We've got a pretty complex and deep sound now, and we haven't even gotten into the LFOs, the filter, the modulation routings, the knob assignments, all of this stuff that we can now do. So let's do filter. Go ahead and turn it on. Uh, I'm going to choose, let's see, I'm going to choose a type first. Do low pass, easy. And while I'm here, I'm going to see if any distortion makes this interesting. I 
mean, that's a beefy sound. Um, all right, now let's play with our filter a little bit. Uh, and there's bandpass, high pass, all kinds of different filters in there, but I'm going to stick with that. Uh, and I love that there's distortion because with wavetable synths, you often have very rich harmonics, uh, and the distortion just brings that out even more. All right, so let's get into the LFOs. I mentioned it's got two of them. Uh, first things first, I'm going to double hit this button. It's blinking. That means I can choose what I want this LFO to tie to. Um, in a classic sort of synth way, let's let's just tie it to the filter. I'm gonna tell it with this parameter that I, how much depth I want it to be tied to the filter. And then I'm gonna hit it again. This LFO is now tied to the cutoff frequency of the filter. Let's turn it on. Cool. All right, page two of the filter. I've got the delay, I've got sync, I've got phase. Let's turn on the sync. It's a little too much depth, but we'll get to that in a minute. Turn up the phase so that gets widened as well. Cool. All right, now let's go back to page one. I'm going to go to shape. Let's get this random. I wanted, um, what's the word? A little more subtle took down some of the depth. All right, let's go to LFO2. Again, double tap it, it's flashing. It's telling me where I want to put it. I'm going to go into page two and I'm going to choose distortion. And we'll put that about the same strength. Now we've got LFO2. <laughs> tied to distortion and it's on its own shape. It's on, uh, oops, page one. It's on sign right now. Let's put it on random. Random. Ooh, I'm gonna turn that depth way down first. Oh, it's running really slow. So let's turn it up. So, two LFOs. Um, you've got an amp envelope. So let's just kind of... And then you've got a modulation envelope as well. So um, same kind of thing, double tap it, it blinks. I choose what I want it to tie to. Um, for this one, let's just say that we want the sub oscillator level to be tied to the modulation envelope one, because what I want to do is have the sub oscillator come in later than uh, the two main oscillators. So i um, turn my modulation envelope on, choose attack. I'm going to set this ramp to ramp up slowly. Two, let's check depth. And I've got a second one there, but I'm I'm not gonna use it this time because I don't really feel like I want to. But I could I could do modulation envelope two and I could tie it also to the filter or to the noise or to one of the other oscillators or any of these other parameters. Uh, one thing I will show you real quick though is you've got two assign knobs here. Uh, they work the same way as these other modulation sources in that you choose them, you tie them to what you want it to be um, 
attached to, and then you can use that as a modulation and, and, and sound editing source as well. So I'm going to hit this. I'm going to hit it again. It's flashing. That's a sign one. Let's tie it to the cutoff as well. Turn that off. Bam. And now I've got... Pretty cool, and I can do that, uh, let's see. I can also do this knob the same way. So yeah, let's do that one too. Let's choose resonance. Turn it up. All right, so um, let's just hear what this is like in other octaves. Whoa, that's wild. Very interesting. Um, all right, so I'm done editing now. I'm going to hit OK. It says save up there. I'm going to choose where I want to save it. Yes, slot one is fine. It shows uh, I'm in bank eight, slot one. You can also see that in your numbers down here. I'm going to hit OK. It now gives me the option to change the name. I always do MG. Uh, and we'll just call it MG01 for now. Boop. Done. Now I am back in Groovebox mode, so I'm going to go and find this bank that I just created. There it is, MG01. And now I can tie it to the sequencer, I can pair it with the drums, I can do all of that stuff that's, uh, that's fun and dandy. Uh, some controls came over with us, so remember we assigned cutoff and resonance to these knobs. Here's a sign one, here's a sign two. Pretty cool. You've got their dimension knob here. That's again, it's kind of like telling the sound how wide it can use that phase that you set up. Might be kind of subtle. I don't know if the YouTube compression algorithm might mess up some of that stereo separation, but uh, it's fairly obvious in, in my headphones right now. Um, all right. The other thing, of course, is you can add effects. So let's turn on some effects. I've got different effects to choose from. Uh, I'm not going to use chorus because that's so similar to the dimension thing that we set up. So let's do reverb. Um, and let's see, it's on. I'm going to tell how much send I want this to go into reverb. I can set the reverb amount here. Uh, we've got a couple other things here. You've got a pitch LFO. You've got release and gate. And you've got this thing called machine gun, which kind of stutters the sound um, to the tempo of the pattern. Interesting stuff there. So yeah, um, not the simplest thing to get your head around, admittedly, so I hope this video has helped you understand a little bit better how the Wavetable synth works on, on the Live and Bass and Beats. Um, I definitely recommend taking the time to, to understand it, because once you do, it's a very powerful sound design tool. It's, it's quite a deep synthesizer under the hood of this thing. Uh, it's not just a preset groove box, um, which you can certainly use it that way. There's a ton of really great presets in here and you can tie those to the sequencer and get up and grooving very quickly. Um, but for me, uh, you know, I really didn't need another groove box. I was mostly interested in the synth part and uh, I think they really nailed it on that. So uh, this, for that reason, this one's a keeper for me. Um, if you are looking for an alternative, I think the closest competitor in terms of price, function, feature is probably this modal craft synth. 
Granted, this is a little bit less expensive. Um, and the interface kind of shows that too. I, personally, I always use it with the companion app because I find editing sounds and, and playing with this to be rather limiting. But uh, that's something else to consider if you're looking for a, a good wavetable synth. Um, this thing actually sounds great, uh, especially through stereo effects. This has stereo effects, you know, worth mentioning. But um, anyway, yeah, so I, I hope you found this interesting and hopefully you learned something by watching me play with the wavetable synth on the Live and Bass and Beats. Uh, please, if you have not already, consider subscribing to my channel. I know I say that every time, but it really does help uh, tell the algorithm to come check out what I do. So thank you to those who support me. Much appreciated. Uh, if you do want to do anything to uh, support the channel, uh, please check the links in my description. Um, I don't use Patreon, and you'll notice that uh, I don't monetize this channel. I don't have ads on here. Not saying there's anything wrong with that. Uh, you know, making videos is a lot of work, and I think people deserve to get a little something back for doing that. But if you'd like to support me, I'd love for you to check out some of my music that I have released on sites like Bandcamp and, and, and all of that. Instead. So anyway, that's it for me today, guys. I really thank you for sticking around and for watching uh, what I had to say and, and, and learning more about the wavetable synth on the live basic beats. Have a good one. See you guys later.